one. I just want to remind you, if you enjoy Steve's Horse Show, particularly this episode, then please, 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 the reason why I do this show is that you'll come see us on our website or you'll come and visit me at one of our retail locations, Cook, Feed, and Outdoor. Thank you. On this episode, we're talking about shoes. Mike, say your name very strong like you're going to introduce the show. Say, I'm Mike, this is Steve's Horse Show. I'm Mike, and this is Steve's Horse Show. Welcome to this episode of Steve's, Steve's Horse, Horse Show. Show. I am your host. He's not Steve Cook. <laughs> and today, I didn't even ask you, do you like to be Mike the Farrier or Mike the Horseshoer? Mike the Farrier, definitely. We got to do the Farrier. Today, I got Mike the Farrier with me. What do you think is the most common question you get besides besides shoe your horse or not? I guess when you come out to someone, did, is there a lot of like issues that people are like, you know, thrush or not or... Yeah, like you know, that. we run across a lot of thrush. I guess here in Oklahoma, the weather is so dry and it plays such a hard part on the on the outer wall of the hoof. So, cracks, toe cracks, we run into all the time. And a lot of times your toe cracks and they're not taken care of and that toe is getting away, you'll get white line disease. And right. that starts, you know, from a small crack that was in the toe that just wasn't addressed. We were just talking about this. What do you think the percentages of how to help a hoof the most Nutrition or farrier? What do you think the percentage is? It's nutrition. I mean, nutrition is, is nutrition. probably well Which, over. 50. I think a lot of people yeah. don't. Yeah, don't sixty think or about seventy percent is nutrition. I mean, the foot is, you know, it has to grow in order for me to do anything. Right. If I come out somewhere and the horse doesn't have foot, uh, a lot of the real short horses and they're broken up, we can't even nail a shoe on. So now we're having to glue a shoe on to try to get that foot to grow. Um, a, a short-footed horse is just going to continue getting shorter unless we apply something to, to allow that foot to grow. So that's the worn. best case scenario is they have a lot of growth and you can work with sure. them. Sure, yeah. Yeah, we would the definitely best. like to see a horse that was long versus too short. And, and, and too short, you think, to help with that is nutrition? Nutrition and uh, a lot of times putting something on the bottom of their foot. Uh, Oklahoma's got so much sand and the, it's so abrasive on their feet. There, there's so much wear going on, you know. In that six-week interval, a lot of times they, they need to have shoes, uh, like here. A lot of these horses are all shot up front, right. just just for the wear aspect of it. Do you think a lot of uh, genetics play in the hoof? Yeah, I, I see a lot of you know confirmation faults play in a lot of your hoof problems. Right. It, it's just the confirmation or or the genetic part of it. You know, I've seen white-footed horses. You know, everyone thinks that a white-footed horse is gonna gonna have shelly or drier foot and not stay together but I think it's more the genetics that plays into that versus the color of the foot. A lot of people think a black foot's going to be a harder and a better right. foot but that's not always the case. When you, you know, a lot of people are worried about, you know, confirmation from a lot of the performance horses as babies and, you know, horses that are growing up, is there, do you think that there's, you know, I know you can do a little bit with that but do you think that there's much you can do with corrective trimming? A lot of your champions are born that way. And, and we can help them. Uh, we do a lot of pleasure horses. And we can we can help that gait and we can keep that knee flat. But a lot of times those babies, they, they are, they're ready to win. I mean, when they hit the ground, uh, there's only so much we can do as a fairy. Right. And I think a lot of pressure is put on us to, to make that horse a champion and to get them there when a lot of times we can do the best we can, but it, it, you know, it's up to that horse. And, yeah. and if there's a environment aspect of thrush that you know people can help with. Definitely, uh, you know, and just having them where they're not in the water and drying out. I mean, that foot is just constantly getting water and drying out, which is going to jeopardize the, the hoof ball quality. You know, introduce thrush. So, um, horses that have a, a nice turnout with grass or something, you know, where they're out mm -hmm. every day. And then come in at night and the stalls. Those those feet generally are, are the best. Best. Yeah. What do you think? So if someone, you know, wants to have wants to help their, they've had issues with their horse's feet in the past. 
what do you think that there's they can do on a regular basis, like once a week? You need to pick them and you know, blah blah blah. Do you think there's a something that somebody can do to kind of help? Uh, yeah, I mean, the more time you spend with your horse's feet and exercise, I mean, daily exercise, even if you're not riding the horse, which is something I didn't think about. I mean, sure. exercise. Yeah, just just lunging the horse and, and you know making sure he's active. The more you stimulate on those feet and stuff, it's going to grow too on on top of the nutrition. And it really couldn't do it. You know, it's kind of like a doctor. I mean, a general practice doctor can't do everything. Right. And I kind of, um, I'm kind of that guy. So should we call you doctor? Sure. The hoof doctor, huh? <laughs>